I'm Dr. Edward Petzer. I'm a consultant cardiologist. I work in Kim's Hospital and I specialize in device and arrhythmia management. What are unexplained falls? A very interesting question and a very difficult um, management problem for many patients. A lot of patients will present to general practitioners with just unexplained traumas, falls, dizzy episodes, faints, um, and amongst that we have the what we call unexplained falls. The diagnosis and management of these patients is critical because not only do they have significant morbidity such as fractured hips, head trauma, um, and also just loss of self-esteem and feeling of safety. A lot of patients, by the time they get to see me, they've actually got agoraphobia and they're actually scared of going out of their homes because they feel that they'll be compromised in a public situation, often maybe have no one with them and feel vulnerable. So really it's a massive clinical problem. They can be more insidious in presentation. We get the obvious fall when someone's had a major traumatic event or whatever, but there are a lot of other episodes which are slightly more subtle. The patient will just have a slight change of awareness. And many times patients don't even know they're falling. They may be sitting in a chair and it may be their spouse that says, you know, I was watching the, my, my husband and suddenly he seemed to be unaware for a couple of seconds and he seemed to come round. So when someone's unconscious, they're not always aware of that situation by definition. When we think of mechanisms of falls, they're multifactorial. In reality, they're big groups. One of the vagal mediated groups, and these are patients that have, for example, neurocardiogenic syncope or vasovagal, which is known to the lay public. POTS also can result in dizziness and lightheadedness. And then we get the more sinister causes of falls, um, which are what we call cardiac syncope. Cardiac syn syncope is normally due to a dysrhythmia of the heart. This can be a fast heartbeat or a slow heartbeat. The patient cannot always appreciate the difference between the fast or the slow, but undoubtedly, with little to no warning, they just clap like a stack of cards to the, to the ground. And it's this subgroup that actually results in major injury, trauma, uh, and in some cases, unfortunately, death. I've been involved as a cardiologist in syncope for over 10, 12 years now. And the one thing I found most frustrating was the time that people sat in no man's land waiting for a diagnosis and appropriate management, and sometimes coming to major harm waiting to be seen. With all my experience of the 10 to 12 years, I fortunately now have the ability to offer a one-stop clinic with the support of Kim's infrastructure. The focus of this will be to offer a system or a management of care or package where we can get very quickly to a diagnosis and management and appropriate therapy. Without a doubt, clinical assessment and history is the key to syncope, and any syncope physician will tell you that. The main benefit I've found by the Faint Falls and Fits Clinic that we've now started in Kim's Hospital is that all these procedures and tests can occur in a very short time frame. Baseline ECGs, echo can be done on the first appointment, but probably most importantly, in a patient that I feel appropriate, a link device. The link device is really an innovative technology which is really a pivotal part of our um, fit, falls and faints um, clinic. And these devices, literally within five minutes, we can inject under the skin. This is no different from in, 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 in injecting identity chip into an animal or um, co contraceptive chip into a woman. It's the same base technology. But the benefit of this offers 24-7 monitoring, three-year longevity, and the data will be pushed to us via remote monitoring. What this means, if I inject the device and the patient walks out that door and they have a six-second asystole, that evening when they get home, that information will be pushed to me and I can act on it the following morning. What this means to the patient is that they will end up coming for their pacemaker, potentially defibrillator, or other intervention before they come to harm. It's worthwhile saying just a couple of points about the link device and how it's implanted. And I do think it's important for people to understand the ease that this is done. And the best analogy I can give, if you think back to Casino Royale, James Bond movie, I'm sure you all like James Bond movies, but if you remember when you're sitting in the car and he had the chip injected in his arm by his superior, it's that simple. It took three to four seconds to inject, and to be honest, for us in the lab, it takes us approximately two to three minutes to do the entire procedure. And with that, a simple 
intervention, we offer a patient 24-7 monitoring for a three-year period. To me, it's revolutionary. The other benefit of the FITS, Falls and Faints clinic is just to point out that we put FITS in not because we're looking for seizures, but a fair percentage of people that have true cardiac syncope or even vasovagal syncope will have anoxic seizures. Excepting there'll be a small percentage of patients that probably do require neurological input, input and without any delay we can move them on to the appropriate physician with no delay to their care or outcome. Kim's is the only hospital that we can really offer a full range of treatment strategies. The Fitz Falls and Faints Clinic is really a diagnostic system that we've put in place. But there's no point putting diagnostics in place if you can't do intervention. And we can offer any intervention going from PCI to pacemaker to defibrillator to cardiac MRI to tilt table, etc., etc. We can offer a full package of care and a definitive outcome for each and individual patient.